Okay, so here we go again. Uh, well, it feels like that, you know, I've done this more than once. Um, welcome to public speaking. You're going to really enjoy this course. I think you're certainly going to learn a lot from it. And, uh, you know, that's not a sales pitch, even the whole in the communication department. I've done it often enough, this course, that uh, I know what the outcomes are. And I know what the outcomes are in general, which is to say, um, I'm not talking about there are three special people in this room that are going to do great out of the 20 or 25 that we have. I'm saying that by far the majority uh, are going to be really, really successful at this and, and very happy with the outcome. I, that always makes me happy, too, because I don't do this for money. I do it for money, you know, but, um, you know, you can also shovel uh, dirt for money. And, and I've shoveled plenty of dirt and I've fixed my own car. So there's lots of jobs and work that you can do for money. Uh, but there's something else, which in the field of the an ethics course, I'm going to detail about this. And I'd say that uh, some forms of work that you do are what's called a vocation. Uh, there's also a profession, which just means this is a profession. And it means that you're professional. Uh, you are, you're trained to do what you are doing. And, um, and educated to do what you're doing. and uh, But this is a vocation. So it's what you have chosen to do so that you can say, well, while I was on that planet, I did something you know pretty special. I didn't just work for money. I worked to give voice to myself. I'm gonna just say this quickly so you understand it uh, very easily, because you will understand it. It's part of the experience of learning to give a public speech. And it's this, that um, vocation and vacation are very similar words. And the reason is because when you go on vacation, assuming that you know your job isn't the most wonderful job in the world, you go on, you know, common thought is you go to the, you, you go down south and you get a suntan. But a vocation and a vacation are the same in the sense that you go away from what you have to do towards what you want to do. Now, there are sentences as well when you speak them in public speaking class. It makes sense that I mentioned this to you. There are sentences you speak that you don't necessarily want to speak, but in some cases you're paid to speak those sentences. And, uh, and there are other reasons that you speak as well that don't necessarily illustrate giving voice to what's going on inside your head, speaking what is called your authentic voice. And so public speaking gives you a chance to do that. You can also do it as work, uh, in the sense of work as labor. Uh, it can be done as a profession, and it can also be done as a vocation. So when I give these lectures, it's vocational for me. Uh, for example, I spent the last six or seven hours just preparing the syllabus and so that I could present it here and also, and I've done it many times, so it's not like I didn't have it. I just keep trying to improve it, uh, just like you do if it's uh, basketball or uh, a lot of the students, I think, play it. I'm not sure. I'm just going to say basketball and volleyball because I, I've had students who do those, so I know that's fairly fairly well. And so that's something that you love and you achieve it and feel better. Well, that's how I feel about, about teaching in general. And so to, to drop right back, uh, this is a vocation as, as well, a, a speaking. It can be part of your vocational activity, part of what you do to become fully you. And that's one of the paradoxes about, uh, about living and speaking is uh, you can be out speaking and say, gee, I, I didn't really believe anything that I said today. And none of it really represented who I want to be or what I want to give voice to in my life. It's one of the main things you do in university, in your degrees. You try to get a sense of who you are and who you want to be so you don't end up being who somebody else thinks you are and who somebody else wants you to be. Yeah, you, you do have to negotiate that. You can't just say, I gotta be me, I gotta be me. You wanna, you wanna, part of being you is being you for the other people around you who care about you and who you care about. But a large part as well is just finding yourself. For example, I wouldn't wanna be, I'm sure they wouldn't want me anyway. I wouldn't wanna be in a physics classroom right now talking. So uh, this is all gonna come up later in the course. So it's my tendency. This is why it takes me so long to prepare this stuff, because I try to 
do the whole course in my head, uh, every single line of it before I begin. And so I'm trying to tell you everything when I can only tell you a few things today. But it might be possible that what you just heard it will help you make a decision about, well, do I want to spend three months listening to this guy or not? And uh, you'll be doing a lot of talking, so I'll be listening to you as well. So uh, it may be it's not a bad idea that I went over those few little things, because uh, I'm going to be a little bit more formal right now in order to main con maintain control uh, over a universe of ideas that have been jammed in my head in the preparation for this one introductory lecture. So I'm going to keep it Try to keep it fairly formal instead of trying to pre 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 in instead of trying to present everything that I know in the very first lecture. All right, so the course is Introduction to Public Speaking. I'm going to look over at my big screen for a second, make sure I read the numbers for it properly. It's COMM 2211 and PBRL 2211. So one is in the public relations line and the other's in the communication line. But the reality is that it's obviously it's one line in the course, but this is how, as you know, uh, you're, 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 you get registered for it. So that's all that that strange thing is. Now, um, it begins on, on the ninth, the first month, the ninth day of 23, and it'll end on the 12th day of the fourth month of 23. So it runs from January to April, as you well know, and it's on. It'll be online. You'll get lectures. They'll be available at the beginning of each week. One perhaps on Monday, and the other on Wednesday. Uh, I don't want to practice promise that that will definitely be the case because uh, an awful lot of what's done in this way requires redo, editing, do again, and so it's possible, you know, that uh, one will be late and not get in till Tuesday or something like that, but. You don't have to be sitting there the moment it appears. So you basically you have effectively a week each time you get these lectures uh, to listen to them at the time of your own convenience. So you can schedule sort of a time to listen to them. Okay, and so uh, the instructor is I am the instructor, uh, Dr. Kenny uh, Wade Kenny, and. Um, what will I tell you about myself? Well, not much. I do have a PhD. I'm a full professor. I've been here at Mount for um, about 17 or 18 years. Uh, I was in the United States for 10 years before that. University of Dayton, uh, University of Cincinnati, University of Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, I won't go into any more detail except to say that I did a, the PhD that I did was in rhetoric, which is the art of the available means of persuasion is what it's called. So it's, it, its basic course is public speaking or speech in general. So there are very advanced level speech courses you can take, like you can take doctoral courses studying speech, but then this there's this course, and that's, this is very important, this context, to say that somebody has a PhD in speech and someone who has taken an introductory course in public speaking. There's a big difference because it's the difference between somebody who just took uh, a couple of weeks of hockey at the hockey school for, for, for people who've never played hockey before and someone who's in the NHL. It's not identical but it's the same kind of thing. And so what it means in the long run is that um, you are going to be introduced to public speaking. So no one is expecting you to end up at the end of this course being a Barack Obama or uh, let's say a Justin Trudeau, all right? And uh, you're just going to be expected to understand and learn some of the basic mechanisms that will make it possible for you to improve your public speaking skills over your degree and another degree if you decide. And if you and when you go out to work, you'll find these skills necessary at this basic level. You may also want to or be required to help to train somebody else in your workplace. Uh, maybe your boss uh, for speech to give a, a delivery in front of others. Maybe you'll be required to speak on their behalf. Maybe you'll be required to speak for your union. Uh, there are very, very many locations where speech uh, needs to occur. But the I only idea I primarily want to make here is that you will improve your skills over time.
and long after this course. So one of the functions of this course is to give you the basic structures that you need so that you can develop them over a lifetime. This is the same as when I took gymnastics when I was a kid. They taught me to stand on my head. This was the first to, to, to make it to the team. You had to stand on your head, do a cartwheel, do a forward roll, a backward roll. Yeah, I think, and handstand, but it didn't have to be great handstand. Okay, so I couldn't do um, what a famous gymnast would do, uh, Simone Biles, for example. I couldn't do any of those floor routine things that she does. I couldn't now. I, I can't even do them in the water. But the idea was nobody was looking at me and saying, well, he's no Simone Biles. Their thought was this. Is he good enough, successful enough, to be at an introductory level so we can join the team and get better, better later on. And indeed I was and made the team. And over the next three years, I ended up you know, competing at a provincial level, winning in a, uh, came third, I know, second in uh, uh, floor routine in the Maritime Provinces. And uh, team won a few times. Doesn't say much about me, but I was on the team. I got my picture in the newspaper, and I still stand on my head. I still walk on my hands, stand on my hands, do a lot of yoga consequent to it, and so on. So, um, and for a while there, when I was a bit younger, I was actually much better than I ever was as a gymnast. I did do some of the Simone Biles stuff around the age of twenty or twenty-one, but it stopped taking gymnastics as a as a training routine when I was 16. Interesting little story I may tell you about it sometime. The main point is that I was an introductory gymnast, so I was judged at the level of introduction. That's important for you because in this course, no one is going to judge you as if you're a professional public speaker, and nobody expects that, and you should not expect that of yourself. You are starting, and that's exactly where we're going to begin. We're going to begin at the start, as you'll see as we go along here. But also the evaluations will have that characteristic. So typically, the students do quite well, and they may think, oh, this guy's just a, you know, he's just a, a freebie for the grade or something like that. That's not the case. It's the combination of the abilities, the level, and the status identity of the course. It's an introduction. So I want you to be able to succeed at an introductory level. So why am I telling you all that? So that you won't uh, have anxiety uh, in relationship to speaking. At this time, I can't relieve all of your anxiety. The main way that you will be relieved of your anxiety is when you begin to recognize your competence. And it won't be for another week or two, if you have worry about that, that your competence overrules your anxiety. In other words, I should think maybe two two weeks down the road, you'll go, oh, uh, I'm not worried about giving a public speech anymore. But it is, it, it is said, it was all through my career, it was said maybe just by public speaking instructors, that it was one of the most anxiety provoking experiences that people who don't have, don't have a history in relationship to public speech have that they, they basically freak out and uh, they're more afraid of it than, than they are being hit by a train. So, you know, uh, all I can do right now is I can only reassure you by promise. That's gonna go away. If it does exist, and believe me, I've seen every kind of it. If it does exist, it's not gonna last. Uh, the, the main reason it's not going to last is a combination of two things. It's competence, as I said, uh, and that's the result of certain steps of preparation that you're going to be put through that's going to make this easier for you. So I'll summarize the two or three hours I could spend talking about that by saying, just have faith for now that everything's going to be fine. It's, it's going to be uh, a more pleasant experience than common and typically well beyond the average number. You'll be very successful at it. Okay. So, uh, so obviously it's on Moodle and the other information here are, is just the important dates of the years up there is that's uh, 
something that you it's just the, the URL site that you you might need to go to for that so I'm going to read you the general description of the course and as I do so I'll stop in a couple of places and uh, just explain what what this section is you can reread it later on if you want to study it so for every uh, for every career for every sport for every celebration there arises occasions to speak before an audience on such occasions, speech can take various forms. It may, for example, educate, persuade, or celebrate. So uh, this is uh, pre a preparing talk. I, I'm speaking to prepare you for the course. But in, in that sense, at least, it's also educational. So, uh, it, well, when I was uh, 10 years old, uh, my grandparents had their 50th anniversary. The whole family was down on Prince Edward Island at that time, and so they said to me, "Give this, give the, uh, give the speech." I said, "What speech?" They said, "Somebody's got to thank everybody for coming. The whole big family and friends and everything. There were a lot of people in, in the area. Uh, the, 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 it was more than a room, a hall, let's say." So at 10, I didn't have any previous experience with speaking, and. Uh, I get up and I said, uh, this actually happened about three times. Uh, it, it wore off before long. So I, I stood up and everybody was there and I said, uh, all my relatives, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you for coming to my grandparents' anniversary. And we we'd like, like you to know that we appreciate all the gifts you've brought. And I remember I'm 10 years old and we hope that in the future, you will bring more. Well, it just spontaneously came out of my head. It's, that's what's called uh, uh, a, a, a impromptu. And uh, so it was an accidental statement, but the, the audience loved it. They laughed and laughed. They wanted to laugh anyway. Many audiences do. Uh, cute kid up at front, relative. Everybody's excited about my grandparents. They want the event to be special. So they're going to laugh. Nobody's going to go, well, that's got to be the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You must you must think you're really special asking for all of these presents for your family. Who is your family to me? And, uh, that's an interesting gesture that I made, uh, which will be important later in the course because we work on gestures as well. When you get the competence for those things and you know how to do them by step by step, then you know what you're going to do when you get up there so you're not as worried because there's actually content for what it is you do. You'll see that. That'll start to emerge and show very quickly. So uh, if they need you at work to give a speech, if there's something that went wrong on the plant floor and uh, your boss says, you go talk to them, you go talk to them, well, you just got yourself a promotion if you can give a good public speech. So there are a variety of occasions that speech is necessary. Speech is called, in our field, we call it architectonic. What does that mean? Well, it, let's say you're a biologist. You still have to speak about biology. Let's say that you're a chemist. You still have to speak about chemistry. Let's say you're a mechanic. You still have to speak about mechanics and engineering. Let's say that you're a carpenter. You still have to speak about carpentry. Let's say you're a hairdresser. You have to speak about hairdressing. So what we have here when we say architectonic, and that means that if you think of a bridge, there's, there's an arch. It creates an arch over uh, uh, over whatever is beneath it. And so uh, it's kind of like an umbrella too. So speech is an umbrella field because all of the other professions have to uh, crowd under it. So speakers don't all have to talk about chemistry, but chemists all have to talk about speech, and that's true for everything. So that's why it's such a great advantage. If you're in business, for example, speech will be very important to you, and many of the students for the intro course take it for just that reason, because they know that to be successful in business, you have to talk to people. That's what you do. It's not just talk. You'll, you'll see that there's more to speak, public speech uh, than that, yeah, but that's all you need to know right now. So uh, again, if I just read the first part of this sentence to make this very clear, for every career, for every sport, for every celebration, there are occasions to speak before an audience. So that what that means is, to put it in sum, wherever you're going after here, you're going to have to speak in public. And while you're here, not just in this class, you're going to have to speak in public. Let's say you're doing group work. You'll have to speak for your group work, etc. So it is a a very valuable asset for you to have in your cadre of, 
of skills and tools that you bring to your employment in the future and also to your relationships because if you can speak effectively not just in the area of what's called public speaking but in relational communication which i sometimes teach you can improve the quality of your friendships and ethics you can improve, improve the quality of friendships you can improve the quality of your let's say romantic relationships you can improve the quality of your uh, employment relationships so it's good for it's good for uh, everything because it is architectonic you take it with you everywhere you go so anything that you learn in this class you will have advantage with in the future i've had students who after taking the course shortly after <laughs> ended up teaching a course in it somewhere not in the same way that i did and i do but but they they you know, training a, a group of co-workers in public speech. For example, one fellow got, uh, he got promoted. He believes it's because he went in and talked to the boss when others were being fired or uh, they, were, they had a, what's called downsizing back then. And he, he made such a powerful impression that they promoted him to manage. So uh, who knows? It could be very good. It could be very good for you. Lots of students have told me that it was. All yeah, right. So regardless of what the form of the event, whether it's my grandparents' uh, 50th anniversary, uh, there isn't a 75 coming. <laughs> I mean, I can laugh about that now. It's just a structure of humor. Yeah, I wouldn't have, you know, many years ago. Uh, so regardless what the form of the event, whether it's you just won a football game and they will all want you to talk or your grandparents are, are as I say, or you've had a a, um, a housewarming that was when i gave one of these bring bring us more stuff bring us more stuff and that, maybe that's why my parents want me to do it and so in any of these cases one should never overlook good speech so we're not just talking about being able to speak not just words coming out of your head but words that are crafted especially in the short speeches that you'll be giving in the course where you've got plenty of time to prepare a very small delivery and so a well-presented speech brings focus to the event and credit to the speaker that people will say afterwards oh that Wade Kenny he really is a good speaker and in fact they sometimes did yeah, well according to me they always did but I'm older now and I can accept uh, failure and a little more humble so I say they sometimes did it provides opportunities to organize and interpret what is happening on behalf of others and uh, so what does that mean? Well, it means if there's a political discussion and you want to get yourself in the middle of that, then you just say, okay, everybody, I think what we need to do now is we need to consider this, this, and this. And what you've just done in that statement is you've organized the, the, the process that's going to un, un, unfold in terms of the uh, characterization of what's going on. Instead of everybody saying, you've made a bid at saying, let's do it this way. And uh, you do it in a classroom, you can wait and say, okay, everyone, if you want to put down your your cell phones and let's talk about the, the mass media course, or whatever it is that you're in the middle of delivering. So, uh, and you can, you, you will demonstrate those qualities of character. People will think, oh, that's who Dr. Kenny is. Uh, he can be other things too. What, what you'll see is you'll see the speech performance in some sense of the educator. Uh, performance here, which will be largely interpreted by uh, my speech performance as well. So well presented speech brings focus to the event. It provides opportunities to organize and interpret, and it provides individuals a chance to figure themselves, that is to say, to stand out for attention and the consequent rewards that accrue from being recognized as a person with speaking ability. There's one little skill I used to give classes. Uh, you'll actually get it, and I think it's your second uh, second assignment. And I've had students who, uh, I didn't tell this fellow to do this, uh, but he took the skill and thought, I'm going to use it in the restaurant and see what happens. So he used the skill with half the, uh, half the customers that night and just spoke in a regular fashion to the other half. And he told me that he doubled his tips on the side where he, he used the skill. So you can gain advantage and, and uh, stand out on the basis of this as well. The leadership skills, which is part of speaking, 
they are very attractive to audiences, perhaps more than they should be, but there you have it. Uh, un under some circumstances, if you're a bad leader, for example, but you're able to act like you're a good leader, that's not, I don't think that's a good thing uh, in the end, uh, because a leader needs to have more abilities than the ability to speak and get other people to do what they want. A leader has to have vision too. When we talk about the ethics of public speech, which we will do a little bit in this introductory course, you'll learn to understand that when you're speaking in front of an audience, uh, this is an authentic act. It's, it's a chance for you to be you, especially uh, in here. So there's there's less value in in selling mayonnaise than there is in preventing a disaster through your speech, unless it would be a, may, a disaster not to have mayonnaise. All right, so next to talent in one's chosen area is the ability to speak well. Well, that goes back to what I said about an architectonic discipline. Uh, the focus of this course then is good speech is a practical skill. As I've been saying, it'll be useful to you. That's what makes it practical. And that can be developed through a knowledge of technique. And that's how I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you the techniques for both uh, delivering it and learning how to internalize it so that it can be delivered. In other words, for example, if I tell you you need robust, I move this back a little bit, you need robust hand gestures, right? If I tell you that, then you know it, but then there's the secondary skill of your being able to do it, okay? And we'll get to that uh, when the time comes. That's why we have just over three months instead of 30 minutes for the course. Uh, and so, uh, Good speech, right? The course addresses three forms, deliberative, epideictic, and forensic. That's uh, just uh, technical. Deliberative is when you're trying to form a judgment. Well, you could do this or you could do that. Uh, epideictic is praise and blame. And forensic is coming to a judgment. Did Tom steal the, uh, the car? Oh, that's a big thing. Or uh, was it uh, misplaced accidentally? Lawyers do that kind of work. All right, so it provides a context within which students can learn both to persuade and to inform. And I'm, I'm informing you about the course and trying to persuade you that it's a good thing for your future at the same time right now. Uh, so you, get, you learn how to organize text, uh, how to prepare uh, background for the speech, uh, delivery skills that are crucial for a good speaker. Uh, yeah. I hate reading tons of texts like this and uh, trying to engage with an audience at the same time. I keep having to retract a specific location. As you all know, the course will take place online, so obviously it's training in online speaking. Now, um, what does that mean? Well, uh, if you're on stage, there are different kinds of skills that you use because, again, the distance away from the audience is much greater. And so you have to use your body in more ways to make as clear as you possibly can what it is you're speaking about. And so that doesn't happen so much in an online uh, uh, location, especially where you don't have a broad technology uh, available for doing it. Uh, for example, if you, if you give a speech in a context where there's uh, a large organization behind it that has money, they can position three or four people with cameras at various distances from you, and they can select the very best angle for a particular part. And then if something is very important, well, <laughs> let me see there. They can line it up just so that you're right there, right in front of the screen. And, um, and they can prepare that in advance and so forth. They can edit it, they can cut out sections. Tremendous amount of money goes into that kind of activity. So with online, uh, excuse me, on stage, you're required to do a lot of the larger performance stuff, or if your distance from the camera is as well. But most of those techniques are effectively uh, uh, involved in the, the world of electronic speaking. That is to say where it'll be converted to some digital or, or general electronic form and, uh, and then distributed out. And that's a level we're not gonna get at in this course because we partly because we don't have a, a couple of million dollars to to do it and uh, you know go look up how much it costs to produce a movie and so um 
but it does take place online now. We talked about the value of online speaking. Uh, the main value that you're going to see is that there's an emerging new communication industry, comparatively new, uh, in your lifetime. And uh, well, in mine, but a later point in my life, uh, where what's available for you. For example, my first, uh, my first experience talking in public, I was somewhere between three. No, I wouldn't be over five. And so I'm going to give you a short version of this. I went to this radio contest. My mother took me. And uh, what you did there was you bid. You made a bid on potato chip bags, which is to say you went with a whole bunch of potato chip bags. The, the reason you have only the bags because you had to eat the chips first. So it was a marketing trick that they had that they, they would say the, the bag itself has worth because once the chips are all out of it, it has worth in the same sense as dollar bills would. So you fold it up and you make a big stack of them. And then you go and you, you go to this radio show, which has an auction where you bid on the, uh, you bid on whatever the toy was that you wanted. It was for children. And so what I wanted was I wanted a fire truck. And so my mother took me to, uh, to the radio station. I bid. And because of a strange series of events, she had about, 60 or 70 times as many potato chip bags as the other children had. So we just wiped the floor <laughs> with, with all the other uh, people who were bidding in terms of the, uh, the, the number of potato chips bags we had. And as the winner of this uh, fire truck, I got invited up to the front. Now, I must have been very young because the, uh, the radio announcer, Remember, there's no TV in this in this context. It's just like when you listen to the radio uh, in your car. Uh, he told me to come up. Well, no, he invited me up, and he had me sit on his lap. And the reason was because um, the microphone was up on the stage, just as this microphone. It's not the same microphone. That would be a really interesting story. The microphone was up on the uh, desk or stage, whatever was in front of him. And I could not have gotten that from the floor. Floor. So he said, you know, come in, uh, come up. You sit on my lap here. Okay, now lean forward. Now, do you know what that is? That's a microphone. And, and you talk into it. And then all your family can hear. All your friends can hear. All your uncles and aunts can hear. Everybody in the studio audience and all their family can hear. And so he gives me this basic narrative. Uh, my first experience or education in mass communication. And he says, uh, so you're going to get to talk with whatever you say next. All of these people. Everybody in what's called radio land, the studio audience, but also everybody who's out there who's a radio in their house is going to hear you. So what I want you to do is I want you to give me your name, say your name, and then say what it is about you that makes you really special. Because he didn't want me up on stage very long. Now catch this. I had some good lines. No wonder I got involved in public speaking. I was so proud of my early routines. I, I must have known I was a golden child for this experience. So I said, I leaned forward and my mother had told me many times what a special thing it was the way that I ate because there were foods that I would eat that my sister wouldn't eat. So she kept praising me for eating these things that, and it made me feel like I was special and uh, because I could eat these things and uh, my sister hated them and probably I did too. But since I got all the praise for it, now he's told me to say uh, what it is about me that makes me special. So I leaned forward and I said, my name is Wadey Robert Kenny, and I especially like liver and eggs. And of course, the audience laughed their heads off. And I've been hearing the story uh, that I especially like liver and eggs for my entire adult life. And the reality is, I don't like liver. <laughs> and as for eggs, eggs weren't special to me back then. I mean, I think they're great. But um, well, why did I say it? I said it so that they'd see me as special. And lo and behold, they saw me as special. And they still talk about it now, all those years later. Many of them are, all, are gone already to uh, wherever we go after we stop being here. But the ones that are still here go, that Kenny boy, I remember him. I think he liked liver and eggs. That's what it was. It was liver and eggs. And so, <laughs> sorry, at least I entertained myself, right? So liver and eggs, I especially like.
livered eggs. Now notice how I said specially. I didn't know there was a first syllable, especially. So I was, well, how, how did that come about? That was the big word. I had heard other people use those that word, and I wasn't cust accustomed to using it. But bear in mind, I had to show how uh, special I was. And so using a word as big as especially, oh, that would show them how special I was. I especially like the burned eggs. And so I, it was time for me to bring out the fancy language. And I guess that's what made them laugh too. Okay, so um, this version of the course, which is online, to go back to the comment about the, uh, about the difference between speech on stage and speech in a recorded context. So when I, even when I was three years old, people were giving speeches on radio. But the thing is, none of those other 300 kids in that audience got to speak that day. I didn't get to speak because I was such a great speaker that day. I got to speak because I had more than 300 <laughs> potato chip bags. That's why I had won the auction. So this is a fundamental principle of communication in the electronic age, which is that the technology was so expensive, like a radio station is such an expensive thing and all the things that make it work, that you, it was rare for you to get an opportunity to send out a universal message like that, a radio signal that could go into outer space and aliens could say, <laughs> and of course, you know what that means. It means, you know, on that planet over there, it with the nine, with the, with the nine, uh, uh, the, the nine circling uh, uh, technical planets, there's a boy on the one that has human life on it. And that boy especially likes Laverne eggs. Hmm. Maybe it's time we visited that planet. It could happen, but it would, it takes a long time for signals like that to get into space. So the boy who especially liked Laverne eggs may be nothing but a memory when the aliens come looking for him with a giant box of, of, uh, alien planet <laughs> eggs uh, for for uh, for him as a as a as a, a greeting gift all right so um now we get into the uh, the technical it, it's very much like if you decided you want to join the basketball team but you didn't want to play basketball or that dribbling is such a drag well you run into a problem with that right so you're in a public speaking class so that will mean two things at the very least it's going to mean you're going to have to speak and then of course if you want to speak well just like if you want to dribble basketball well or you want to play piano well you're gonna to have to practice that's what makes it demanding yeah, uh, it and, and that's how you develop the skills for it. In that sense, learn to speak well is like learning to play basketball or guitar. That's why I mentioned it here. Uh, and you will do it the same way you wanted to speak. Or not, excuse me, you wanted to develop a hobby, whether it's uh, uh, chess or uh, anything else that develops competency or requires competency. That is to say, where you have to be good at something in order to do it, you typically have to practice. Uh, I play guitar, I play piano, I play a variety of other musical instruments, I swim, I do a whole bunch of stuff. You probably do some things too, not as many as I do, maybe met all of them better, I don't know. But uh, if you do want to add things, you have to have to practice. And so what you should be thinking about is uh, the thing you do that actually is special. And I suppose half of you are going to go to your fridge and take out liver and eggs tonight. Uh, that's a sign of desperation at this point. But if you do say, well, you know, uh, uh, I can play basketball really well, or I really like sewing and I've made some fantastic clothes, or, uh, you know, I can really cook well, or uh, I, what, I, what did I used to make? Uh, I make a mean spaghetti sauce, which was ridiculous. I had, I had to stick with something else in the long run. And so um, class will be undertaken in two parts, the delivery of the week skills content uh, by the professor and response presentations by students, uh, which is to say, uh, I'm going to give the lectures, obviously. Uh, most of these student presentations will be very brief, uh, although they, they increase in length as the course develops. So that part I'm gonna show you uh, in a couple of minutes here, it'll be on the screen. 
reading and viewing lists. The course content will be available in video lectures. So I'll just say this quickly. Um, you don't have extended readings. I'll give you some notes and uh, I've put up a, uh, a URL that connects you to a public speaking book. If you want to read uh, the book, that's, uh, that's up to you. But this is a course in speech. And so uh, you will not have in, you will not have exercised the interests of the course and what is of value for you in the course. If you memorize a whole bunch of stuff in a book, this is the course where you learn to speak. You take a you take the course in speech, the intro one, so you can basically learn to speak. And we've got plenty to do, plenty of responsibility without having to read in detail. So you are at liberty to go read works on public speaking uh, if you so choose. It's not a decision or a choice that students I've had in the past have typically made, but it's available to you should that be uh, your your side interest or whatever. Uh, but mainly what you'll be doing is you'll be working on the assignments and speaking and just listening to the lectures. And that's that's more than enough to make you really special as a speaker. I, I've got the history to, to show it. So the methods of evaluation. So there are there are two primary areas. I'm not going to uh, to read it again because it just confounds my ability to deliver find the line again in small large text etc so I'm, I'm just going to tell you there's going to be a series eight of them of small assignments uh, we, i'll be illustrating them in just a minute and so you'll see what they're like uh, but for the most part two minutes three minutes maybe at most and so they'll be due on a weekly basis over the course there'll be eight times They'll be due by Saturday of that week. It's all set out on the chart. And then along with that, there will be three speeches that are longer and that are prepared in advance and fully structured. So the little mini speeches are, are basically five points each, and uh, they start almost right away. You'll see how that works in a minute. So all of these little deliveries that you do on Saturday, the eight of them, in the 15 week course they'll be uh, they'll be required and then there'll also be three speeches uh, the first speech will have to be nine sentences long the second will have to be 18 sentences long but you can use the first nine sentences and attach them to the following nine sentences to get your second speech so your second speech will have if you choose to it'll have all of the first speech in it just with another nine sentences added to it. You'll see how that works again in the future. And then your third one, uh, your third one, you can do again, another uh, 18 sentence speech, or you can do an extra nine sentences. Now that is the one that you would do, the 27 sentence speech. If you were thinking, I think I can get an A plus in this course, because you can't get an A plus unless you go to the, in your third speech goes to the 27th. If you go to the 18 and it's a top level presentation, you'll get an A for the course, assuming that you've reached that level with everything else you've put together, right? All right, so if we turn the page, you're gonna see that there's a chart there and the chart is gonna lay out all those little deliveries that you have to give. So the way that it works, I don't know if you can see it here or not, but uh, in this upper section, which let me see what's the color I've got black and white here. Just give me a second so I can put it on my big screen and I can see what, uh... here we go. Okay, so the first section is is up at the top and it's basically blue uh, with a yellow stripe down the side here. That stripe says January. The one below that is green with a green stripe and that says February. And the next one is kind of orangey brown and it has a purple stripe down it and that says Okay, so there are a variety of things that are frustrating about this process. And one of them is that when you switch computers, which I recently had to do, the sound parameters are different so that it, the sound is not as loud. And then also it just jammed up and destroyed the last part of the video. So um, I'll make the adjustments for the next uh, delivery. But I switched to my prior computer to get this... Um, this finished up. I'm not going to give you all eight of the assignments 
elaborated and explained here. But I am going to give you the one that uh, that you'll be required to present on uh, before Saturday midnight, and it will be worth. Uh, it's going to be worth 10 points. It's going to be of the value of two assignments. I'll have to figure out where those five points come from. Maybe it's just easiest to make them a bonus point for the course. Yeah, but uh, the first part is an introduction. And so what you say is you say, Hello, my name is Tammy Smith, and I'm in the Business Administration Program, and I'm... Uh, uh, taking this course in public speaking because I'd like to improve my speaking skills and you know, I, I hope that I enjoy it and I can't wait to get started. You're done. Okay, so that's half of the value. The second part is to imitate Tony Tiger and you'll do that a couple of ways. One is you'll, it's the their great line from Tony Tiger. You can look it up. And uh, the first thing you'll do is you'll lean back like that. So you're just lean back at the waist. Your arm is up like a baseball player's, and you'll say, They're great! And you'll throw yourself up into the air. Well, not lifting, but you'll you'll throw your upper body up into the air. And look up to where you're throwing, because great is very, very high up in the air. All right? That's the first version. The second version, you'll start with your hand like this. You have to check your screen frame, and you'll say, there. Now notice where my thumb is going. It's going down. There. And then I'll reverse it and bring it up. Great! And bring it up. Since I can't go high with it this time, I'm going to bring it across the screen like that. So there. Great! And so, uh, the, the, there. Great! Okay. And then the third one will be a small jump into the air. There, great! Which is the cheerleader jump. You need to go outside to do that one. And then the only other one is, uh, and then you finish that off with the um, shoots, he scores! Okay, so I'm going to attach that to the video. That's your, um, that's your assignment for this week. And if you want to have a sense of what the assignments are like, they're no more complicated than that. Okay, uh, but the gestural parts of what I had you do with um, with Tony Tiger are very important. All right, uh, I'll explain how in forthcoming lectures. All right, but that's the end of the lecture for today. So you're great, <laughs> a little uh, corny, but still great. Have a great uh, day, and you'll get your second lecture in a couple of days.